Hi, I have an extremely fun project for you today. The paint on this fabric was made using watercolor paints. It's a very fun process. Then you have a beautiful piece of fabric to use for slow stitching. All you need to have is some fabric, some water, and watercolor paints. Let's get started. I have some small pieces of thin cotton fabric. This is cotton lawn. You could also recycle bed sheets, pillowcases. Really this project, you can use any fabric, preferably white. And then I'm using watercolors. So I have two sets here, that just small watercolor sets. This one has some fun colors, including a nice pink and a turquoise color. So I really like it. Just tiny little pans. And then the other set I have is this small koi watercolor set. It's a really nice set because it, again, it has a few more colors, very, very small amounts of each color, but it's really all that, that I need. Now this came with a water pen. Water pens, you, you fill the inside with water and it makes it really easy for activating the paints and spreading the paints. So I have a couple, this is a very small travel size one, and I have a couple other ones. This one's a little bit larger. It's filled with water, it has a, a nice big flat brush on it. And then I have this one, which is a tinier one, it's more pointed. If you're not familiar with water brushes, one thing that I will mention about undoing them is sometimes you will buy them and take them home and you're trying to undo them and you can't. You're trying to turn it and turn it and you can't undo it. And it's because for a lot of water brushes, they turn the opposite way. And that's so that it stays tight and doesn't leak while you're working on it. And then I also have this little tiny mister. You could have a bigger one too. And this one is just filled with water. So I'm gonna set up my watercolors now and get to painting on the fabric. I'm taking some wax paper and I'm placing it down on my work surface. And that's because even though this surface I have, you can see lots of paint on here. This is my painting surface. What's gonna happen with the fabric when it gets wet is the water is going to start spreading and if I have this piece underneath it's going to stay a little more contained and then I'll be able to put some of that water to use for other pieces. I'm going to start by using my mister to wet my fabric. I could use any spray bottle. Then I'm going to choose a brush. I'm going to start with this big one. You just have to squeeze it to bring the water out. This one's already nice and wet. And I'm gonna start with lighter colors and I'm gonna to work towards darker colors. So I think I'm gonna start with some yellow. I'm loading my brush up and I'm just gonna start putting some paint down. I don't have a plan. I'm just gonna let it happen. Because this fabric's wet, the paint's going to spread out, soak in. Now I'm going to move to orange. This palette here has a few shades of orange. So I'm gonna start with this very orangey yellow color. It's a nice bridge between yellow and orange. So as I'm loading my brush up, just squeezing on here to release some water to get that paint flowing onto the brush. over 
some of the areas that already have yellow and let those colors mix. I am almost ready to switch to a darker orange. So I'm wiping the last of that off. I'm going to squeeze my brush and dip into this orange. And I'm gonna come up to my other set. There's an orange here that's just slightly different. It's a little bit darker. Still had some of the other orange on my brush, so the two are mixing together a little bit. So this first go, it's not gonna look that different. Get some more on here. See how this is a little bit darker. Now my options here in terms of cleaning off my brush are to squeeze and wipe it off right on this piece. I could also have another piece that I use to clean my brush off. And then when I go to work on this second piece, there's already going to be some colors on it. Okay, now I'm going to switch to using this peach color that's in this set. This is more of a milky shade, less translucent, has some white in it. So that's gonna be interesting. That's nice. mixing and blending as I go. Now I'm going to switch over to this set has this bright pink color. That's really pretty. I'm going to put some right on the edge of this piece here. Again, I really have no plan about what I want this to look like or what the end project is going to look like after I'm finished with this painting and what this is gonna be the background of. Just enjoying putting the paint down. The thing about watercolor painting is it dries a lot lighter then it goes down and also this piece of fabric i sprayed with water at the beginning so that's going to dilute the pigments as well okay now i'm going to clean my brush off and go back to that yellow that i began with and put that in the top here So now I'm just going to look at my piece and see if there's anywhere that I feel I've missed that didn't get pigment on it and go in and put that in. It's looking pretty good. So now I'm going to clean my brush off. I'm going to fold this fabric for a second here just to make sure that it's really absorbing. Clean that brush off. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece that's completed and I'm going to let it dry. What I have is I have a mesh baking rack that I've had in my studio for years. So it used to be a rack when you take something you've baked out of the oven to cool that you put your, your bread on or your cookies on. I have one of those racks and that's what I'm going to put this on to dry. So I'm going to go and do that first. And then I'll show you what, I'll, what I'm going to do with what's left over here. I'm going to open up this piece that I used to clean my brush on. It's quite wet, you can see. And I'm just going to absorb all the pigment that's left. I'm going to close up this watercolor set. And I'm going to use it to press down 
on the fabric. So there it's absorbed the color. I'm gonna let this dry and I can use this again as I'm working and this will just get more and more layers of color on it as I make more. I'm doing the same thing again. I'm gonna use my third piece. I'm gonna bring this piece back in to wipe my brush on. And I'm going to, this time, do a different color palette. I wanna do blues this time. I'm going to start with this beautiful turquoise that's in this set. I'm going to spray this piece and start laying down color. Now I'm going to switch to a blue that's in this set. It's very helpful when you first get a set of watercolor paints to make a color card if you don't have one already. So this one came with a little card that I could make my swatches. This one didn't, and so I made one myself so I know what I'm going to get. I'm going to go into this Prussian blue, which is a really beautiful color. It's a beautiful blue indigo. I'm going to clean my brush off here, squeeze the water out. I'm going to switch to another brush here. I'm going to use this. This one's a little bit more pointed and I'm going to go for this really bright cobalt blue. One thing that's really nice to do when you have a working with blues is to bring in green. You can do that by adding green itself or by mixing in some yellow. So for example, if I was to use just a really bright lemon yellow, it's going to make some nice greens. And get a little bit more of that. Maybe I'll bring that over here and down here. Squeezing this and mixing it in. And I could also just come and get this pale green and see what that looks like. I'm going to choose this lemon yellow and see what that looks like. And then there's this, has a little bit more ochre in it, this yellow. I'm going to come back to this blue. I'm just filling in all the blank spots now, getting everything covered. Okay, I'm just going to clean off my brush. I'm going to let this dry. These are now dry. So what I'm going to do is take them over to my iron and iron them. Watercolor itself on paper isn't known to be particularly light fast. It's not the same as acrylic paint or uh, fabric dye. But when you think about fabric and getting stains on fabric, what locks them in? It's heat. So I'm going to iron these and it's going to set the pigments in. And because this is uh, a thin fabric that's been thoroughly wet and dried, the, the watercolor has soaked through to the back. It hasn't changed the hand of the fabric, meaning that it hasn't stiffened it like an acrylic paint might. So I'm gonna iron it now and we'll take a look at it after that. So here the fabric's ironed. Some of the colors faded quite a bit, particularly the pink. That's just the nature of watercolor paint. I think it's fairly permanent. I think that it's going to last. And I think if it was placed in the sun, in a really sunny spot, there's a chance that it could, over time, fade as anything would. I'm not worried about it. I'm going to use this fabric as is. 
and move to the next step of this project. I'm going to be using this orange, yellow, and pink piece of fabric to slow stitch on and make a beautiful project. This was a different way to use watercolor paints, a different way to put color down on fabric, and I'm really looking forward to the next step of stitching on this piece. So please join me then in my next video where I'm going to be adding stitch to these watercolor fabrics. Thank you so much for joining me. Until next time, happy stitching.